don't like abandoned places. They remind me too much of death and tragedy and destruction. And for the longest time, I didn't want to come to Chernobyl. That is, until I found out that there's people who still live in the Chernobyl exclusion zone today. And today, we're going to meet one of them. It's the year 1986, the height of the Cold War between the United States of America and the Soviet Union. Both giants are ruthlessly competing to become the global leader in nuclear power, technology and politics. But something is about to go very wrong. It's the middle of the night on April 26, 1986 at the Chernobyl nuclear plant in the USSR. Inexperienced workers take over the night shift during a nuclear safety test. But due to the reactor's already unstable condition, instead of shutting it down, the operators accidentally trigger a nuclear chain reaction. The reactor explodes, spewing nuclear waste onto the whole of the surrounding area, including the town of Pripyat, home to 50,000 nuclear plant workers and their families. Massive amounts of contaminated nuclear waste make it as far as Western Europe. Over 30 people die immediately following the explosions, but thousands are exposed to radiation poisoning. The area is deemed as contaminated and unsuitable for human life. Everyone living in the Chernobyl exclusion zone is evacuated, but some have since returned. Check this out. There used to be roads, flowers, cars, and now just trees. Today this place is completely overgrown. There's basically a forest all around me, plus some abandoned buildings. But of course, 35 years ago, this was not the case. This was a bustling town with workers, families, kids living here. Not anymore. We're about to go and see a place inside one of these buildings that's possibly like the starkest reminder of the reality that was once here, a kindergarten. How does it feel, Mike? A little spooky, honestly. Yeah, right? Over there, we were walking through the forest and it looks just like this, but it feels a bit different because it's actually asphalt. Really? And so it looks like a forest, but it actually used to be a parking lot. All right, let's go inside. Oh my God, this place is already giving me the grapes and I have barely gone inside. All right, let me show you. Here is the doorway that I came in through. There's a window here and here are lockers. Kids' lockers that used to, you know, there used to be things in here. You can probably imagine that on an average day, on an average Tuesday morning, the kids living in this area would come in through that door. They would enter the hallway. They would drop off their stuff in the same locker every day and each kid would have his or her own and then they would continue through here. This is where they would learn. This is the classroom. <sighs> Can you imagine how different it would have been 35 years ago, 40 years ago, when there was actually life here? And now there's only the sound of rain and <laughs> birds singing in the forest. And I think that's what makes this place so creepy. The memory of the laughter and the singing, and now the silence. There was once a kid in this classroom <laughs> in 1985, just before the disaster, that would, that would have been learning from this book. It was a strange feeling. I mean, it feels like I've entered someone else's world. Oh my God, look what I found here in one of the cupboards. Oh, it's a pair of shoes. It's a pair of baby shoes. Mm. 
This place is huge. Once you start going down the corridors, you realize that they just keep going and going and going. I don't know how many kids would come here every day, but well, I guess it would have been in the hundreds. It's massive. Here is a map of the former Soviet Union. How oh, grand. This is today's Russia. And here we've got Ukraine. We are somewhere here right now. And this is today's Belarus. Oh, freedom again. Oh. Honestly, I'm a bit relieved. That place definitely gave me the creeps. Not the biggest fan of abandoned places, in all honesty. It feels overwhelming to visit the town of Pripyat with all of its empty apartment blocks and abandoned infrastructure. But there's a lot more to the Chernobyl exclusion zone than Pripyat itself, and few people ever talk about this other side. That's what I want to show you today. There's a lot of people who used to live in this area and in these forests before the Chernobyl disaster. But, of course, all of them had to be evacuated after the blast. Now, a lot of them came back to their homes, to their lands, and they are called self-settlers. People who decided to settle here by themselves. And most of them are actually elderly people who really had nowhere else to go, no other home, no chance to rebuild any other home. Many of them have since passed away. And this is one such home, which used to belong to Baba Olya. It's really amazing to see how quickly nature takes over in places like this. I mean, I would estimate that this house has been abandoned for maybe 10 years, maybe a little bit less. and. It's all just bushes, nettles, trees, grass, plants, and it will forever stay like this because nobody new can move into the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Since a lot of the self-settlers who had come back here have since passed away, many of their houses are completely, you know, destroyed, rotting, they have pretty much crumbled. And most of them are barricaded up or you simply cannot go inside, but there's one right here that I'd like to check out inside just for a quick minute. Let's see what's inside. These are someone's coats. You know, they don't look that old. Houses like this in Eastern Europe are called hatas. I remember my great grandmother used to live in a pretty similar house. And, you know, hatas are very simple village homes that consist of one living room plus kitchen and then maybe one bedroom and the toilet is usually outside and you know what these houses are disappearing all over eastern europe crumbling rotting falling down <sighs> maybe our kids will not live to see them Making one more quick pit stop before heading over to Baba Ganya's home and that is the convenience store, the magazine that you see behind you. We're gonna get some chocolate, some sweets, just some little bits and pieces to say thank you for her hospitality. And I bet in the meantime that you're curious about the inside of a convenience store in Chernobyl. <laughs> Me too. Let's go inside. <laughs> So uh, Igor, uh, what should we get for Papaganya today? Some goodies, I guess. Uh, bread, of course, maybe milk, maybe sausages, uh, butter, porridge, of course, biscuits, cigarettes. Kirin. <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> Cake uh. with uh, vodka, macaroni, spaghetti. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a little bit surprised to find out that there are grocery stores in Chernobyl itself. That's just not something that I ever thought about. But it turns out that there's actually a lot of people who live here in this town. People who still take care of the nuclear plant, even though it has been decommissioned. But there's still a lot of work that needs to be done around it. And all these people, they live here and they shop here. This is their place. This is just an ordinary grocery store. So how many people live in and around Chernobyl, in the exclusion, around the exclusion zone so these per days? Uh, permanently uh, around four, uh, 100 people live. 
just permanently, babushkas, uh, self settlers But uh, around 4,000 workers stay here during their work shift. Right. So that, uh, that is why we have such a big grocery stores. Actually quite a big number, 4,000 people who temporarily live here, who come here just for work, but that's a huge number and I definitely didn't expect that so many people would be living here in Chernobyl. I mean, from what I previously knew about this place, that's definitely a surprise. So now that we've got everything we need, we can finally get going. And how long is the drive? It's around 40 minutes, uh, 40, 20 minutes uh, good road, 20 minutes very bad road. Very bad roads in Ukraine means... It's very bad road. Very bad roads. <laughs> so we better get going. So here we are, this is Baba Ganya's home behind a big fence in the middle of nowhere in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. <sighs> this is it. Wow, it's so quiet in here. Thanks. <laughs> it was quiet in here. A road signs. Underneath all this grass, there was once three roads. This was a crossroad. Four. One, four. Two, three, four. That's crazy all completely overgrown with time. You know, if I didn't know that I was in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, I would have thought that this is just pretty idyllic village somewhere in Ukraine. Look at there's a little vegetable patch, there's a beautiful traditional home, there's a barn, there's wood for the winter. Just amazing. This doesn't feel like Chernobyl. The Chernobyl that we know anyway. <laughs> Does Baba Ganya normally welcome in tourists like always, us? Always welcome. She asked me to help her to bring some food for you, potato, chicken, uh, chicken ear for you, especially for you. Chicken ear? Yes, pork, pork ear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were getting some very special kind of chicken straight from Chernobyl. Right. Here we've got some beautiful Eastern European pickles. I know these very well from home. And these cucumbers come straight from the garden that you see no, behind us. I don't know how to feel about that, but... Pickled by radiation. <laughs> <laughs> you see these two little glasses? These are shot glasses. And you know what shot glasses mean in Ukraine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This uh, vodka. Vodka. Baba Sama. <laughs> Not only do we have Chernobyl cucumbers, we also have Chernobyl moonshine. Samogon. Samogonka. Thank you. You have to have three. You, three? You, have, you must have minimum three. Oh. It's minimum. It's like three. You <laughs> three? She, she made uh, four huge uh, barrels, uh, or not barrels, like uh, uh, big bottles of wine and 20 big cans of You can try everything. You will try everything. Alright, let's dig in. <laughs> to medical purposes. <laughs> For health. 10.30 a.m., why not? <laughs> oh. Dobra, Dobra. Dobra. Oh. Mm -hmm. Very strong. Like 60% quite easily. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Homemade pickles. The best. Absolutely delicious. There's no comparison between store-bought pickles and homemade pickles. You know, they're made 
from the garden Boy, with love. <laughs> there is no taking no for an answer here. Sure, I'll take more. This is my third plate of potatoes and pork fat. <laughs> for health, right? For health. That's right. How does a Canadian feel welcomed by Eastern European? I'm uh, building my uh, my winter tire right here to, to survive the long cold times. Babaganya is so sweet. She is constantly telling us to eat more, drink more for health. Oh my gosh, we are being spoiled out here. <laughs> <laughs> if you have two legs, you have to have two more shots. I definitely do have two legs, so... Cheers. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Down the rabbit hole we go. <laughs> oh, man. You're worse than my college roommates. <laughs> this moonshine is actually made from potatoes and sugar, and that's pretty much it. Full, fully, fully, fully homemade right here in Chernobyl. Wow, it's really good. Familia Zavarotnya, Hanna Alexeyeva. 88. Can you tell us about the place where you live? Selo, live, kupovate. Chernobylskoho rayona bylo. Ja tu tradila si kristila si kočo umerci. Ja u jednoj tjurmi ne bila, a to u skruč bila. Iz malku karovi dajila, dajila svinnej. Tadi kurej, u školu hodila, i tadi ja znate jaki pomnik, jak ja u jedin klas moj s njim god hodila. A tak, djetki, ma ja ničo ne pom, ja uže stara. Do you remember the Chernobyl disaster when it happened, the day when it happened? Ne pomnim od toho dnja, toho dnja šest dnj mi ništo ne pomnim, zrabili ljude što hotili doma. No mi na polji, na polji rabili kartoplju kidali. Mi prihodit i kaže, Уже сорвался реактор шесть дней. У вечера звездец поресята, свинья звездец на базу, и там они там писали, гроши отдавали за все. А у ранчи коровы. Пришел до меня агроном со мной так дружил. Пришел до коровы, Алексей Ивановна, возьмите у вас коллег богатого, пять душ едя, пять душ едя, значит, на веселку. Так возьмите себе что-нибудь по душе, так, и то мы, у меня, не знаем, куда везут, чи в лес, чи куда. Я взяла картопли, я взяла бутыль сала, то есть у нас 20, у торбу, думаю, хоть даю листи, вот это свекруха, матка, соня, я и человек, пять душ у нас едет. А там людей даже выгоняли, вот приехали, они как ваны родящие привезли. Знаете что, были гарны, а люди плакали, бо выгоняли. Дали нам домики, домики дали нам. Мне там дали от самого стола до ложки и матра, и И ковру, и все она давали. Ничагенько, ничагенько. Ничего вот так. Вот так, ну, вот это я сама так дошел, вот это у меня шло. Все. А приехали, то такие курки подохли, коты подохли, коровы поздавали, порешат, что такое едем. Нас кажут на три дня. И коровы забирать, порешат на три дня. Одиннадцать душ. Говори ему, что ты ваш богатый, все ложь великое было. Еду, а вы возите. Да меня их приедет два раза, так мне это едет хватит на месяц. А у нас лавка идет, через пять недель лавка идет, у нас слив через свинки. А лавка приедет, ну лавка золота. Что закажите и привозите. Усе ти лекарство, ти еду, усе везе. This is Samogonka, which is a local Ukrainian moonshine which Baba Ganya makes herself. This is Samogonka? Yes, I'm sure you know. Okay? Dobre? Can I? 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 First taste? Oh, good! Good, I'm sure. Like champagne. It tastes a little bit like champagne. It's a little bit sparkling and quite sweet. Yeah. Yeah. 
I came here to meet Baba Ganya because I wanted to find out why people came back to Chernobyl to live here despite the fact that the radioactive waste pose a real threat and danger to their lives and the lives of their families. After having spoken to her, I am still not completely sure whether the people who did come back here made the right decision. I don't know. I guess I can't be the judge of that. But what I do know is that Baba Ganya's ties to her family home and to her family village are stronger than what most of us can imagine. As she said herself, this is where she was born, baptized, and this is where she will die. And I don't know if that's something that many of us will understand. Baba Ganya really reminds me of my own great-grandmothers. And honestly, I think because of that, I kind of get it. I understand it because I remember just how self-determined they were and how stubborn they were to be self-sufficient and self-reliant and living on the soil that they called theirs. And I think that's quite rare these days and quite beautiful. I'm not trying to glamorize this life, definitely not. All I'm saying is that I think, I kind of understand why Baba Ganya still lives here. Спасибо. 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 Спасиб